All right, guys. I want to talk about some hidden gems in Beta Flight 4.1 that I have seen no one talk about that make a huge difference in your flying. Uh, I also want to go ahead and take this chance to show my settings and also talk about some of my most frequently asked questions for some kind of unusual or irregular things that I do on beta flight that people always ask me about I will address them fully here um, <clears throat> starting with my motor idle 2.7 I bring it down and I'm just gonna go through these kind of fast I like to bring down my motor idle here and have a idle up switch for about you know 2.7 to 3 percent that way I can hit that switch and uh, maybe land on something or uh, do a wall tap without having too much influence from the PID loop so that's why that is low just something you have to try <clears throat> um, everything else is pretty normal RPM filtering um, yeah so let's get to the PIDs let's get to the real stuff PID tuning here we go so the way that I have it set up first of all I term relax as you'll notice I keep it on gyro where the devs have recommended set point I think it comes with set point on default I like it on gyro because I actually like the uh, reactive nature of iTerm I don't know how to really explain it but you'll notice in a lot of areas I sort of don't mind a little bit of latency um, as you'll see with my uh what is it filtering we'll see we'll get to that okay d man i've i've uh left it the gain and stuff alone pretty much anti gravity i've jacked it up 7.3 so what you'll notice is my feed forward is 0 and 0 on pitch and roll it used to be zeros all the way down why do i do this this is a question that i get asked probably the most um it has to do with obviously with feel and with knowing where the quads gonna end up so feed forward is great if you're doing a snap roll right if you're just going from 0 to 100 you want the uh, extra added D at the end now my understanding is now feed forward is only boosting D whereas it used to boost P and D and that's where I started to really hate feed forward was when it was boosting my P values so it would be almost as if the computer was trying to guess uh, where I wanted to end up based on how fast I moved my stick and then it felt like my rates were being jacked up. It would interfere in where my quad would end up. So if I wanted to end up completely upside down for example sometimes I would end up past that. and not necessarily because it was increasing my rates but it was kind of tricking me to the length of time that I'm supposed to hold the stick because I see that it's you know it's coming in really quick and because you know the feed forward was amping up the P so I would let off the stick too early and then I wouldn't quite end up where I wanted to or vice versa so that's why I keep it off I keep it on yaw now because I I think it kind of I don't know what it does it might be doing absolutely nothing because I have no D on y'all but I just keep it on it's the same thing like back in the days when I thought that uh, when I first found out that I did wasn't liking feed forward when it first came out I had smart feed forward on if you remember that they don't have it anymore but and uh, I was told by one of the beta flight guys that that's pretty much the same as having uh, all the feed forward off at those low values of 60 to 100 that I had so I you know I'm a, a feel kind of guy so although I didn't know what smart feed forward did I knew that it felt good and the same thing now so I know that uh, having 60 on y'all it's not doing anything bad and if it's doing something good then great um, so let's move on so the D's I've jacked them up a little bit the eyes I've brought them down a little bit um, I typically do like high eye term but I thought that the eye term that they had was insane I you could even bring it down lower than this and the reason that 
Mm. I personally brought it down, especially on y'all, was I noticed that if I were to take a big sort of looping turn and try to keep it smooth, the I-term would cause a prop wash or some kind of oscillation. And I think because it was reacting slowly to either dirty air or I don't know what, what the deal was, but bringing those down, bringing the P's up a little bit. So I brought the P up, I think, by five or seven on y'all, which is goes against my nature. But I actually saw Vanover did this, and I don't really – the way that he tunes his PIDs is kind of way different than the way I do. But I decided to try this because he was like – uh, adamant about bringing up y'all P. So I tried it, and what do you know? It is a lot better. It's a lot more controlled. It's a lot less uh, prop wash in dirty air or y'all maneuvers. So I like it. Okay, that's enough on that. Let's go to the rates, spend a second on this. What I want to talk about here is what I've done to the TPA. Um, I've bumped the TPA way up to 1750. The reason I did this was because of the amount of kind of uh, low throttle moves that I like to do. So a lot of the moves I do is where I just punch the throttle and then I will let go. And I'll do some kind of cool upside down, you know, whatever it could be. And the, it just wasn't the same. So I brought the TPA back up. I understand why they brought it down because of the they want you to have kind of jacked up uh, eyes and D's. So since I'm not really doing that, I can bring that down with no problems. Um, I mean, bring the TPA up with no problems. TPA of 0 0.6 at 17.50. So these are my rates. Uh, this is generally where I'll have it on everything. I have brought them down a little bit, but not by much at all. Um, no throttle expo. Don't like it. Uh, I prefer to just get used to the since I fly a lot of different motors, you know, I I noticed that the biggest throttle expo is in the motor that you choose, you know, especially if you're changing stator uh, sizes, 2207 or 2306. But even amongst like 2306s, you'll notice that some are bottom heavy, some are uh, top heavy. They'll have that pop. Anyway, so I just keep that off and I, I like to do it um, by picking the right motor instead of you know using software so filtering gyro filters pretty much off D term is all the way here I didn't know that I had it like that um, <laughs> yeah I guess that these are the on the career Riotoas and they are just beautiful um, motors so I guess you can get away with that now gyro RPM filter I don't know what's going on some people are putting this on one I tried it. I didn't really, I didn't notice anything. And if I don't notice anything, I sometimes I like to be on the safe side until I get to the point where I'm just like, I feel like I want some kind of added. I'm searching for benefits, basically. Then I'll go around and I'll maybe, you know, that's probably how I ended up at almost no uh, gyro filter was I was just looking for some more um, benefits. And they say to keep these two. Uh, together, but I'd rather have it like this. Now, the hidden gem that no one, I've seen no one talk about this, and this is the thing that makes Betaflight more like Flight One, and it's right here. Auto smoothness. Ding, 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 ding. This is basically RC smoothing from uh, Flight One and it is awesome it is the so the thing i like the most about flight one if you watch that video where i compare beta flight and flight one is the stick feel giving the quad this really pretty looking you know uh orientation when you would invert and when you would do like certain certain moves where it's really difficult because of uh inertia and gravity and the way the quad thrust wants to go it's really difficult to predict where the stick should be and this helps. The only thing I've done that I recommend everybody do is increase your smoothness to 15. I notice uh, that this is one of the biggest advantages of the new Betaflight if you like that kind of smooth, juicy uh, flying. Now, 
just adding five isn't going to do much at all, but you do feel the difference. You can add more. It does increase a little bit of latency, but like I said, I actually kind of like the, uh, in certain areas, I like a reactive feeling of flying. So I'm, I'll be just kind of going with the quad, you know, uh, when I'm not trying to fly so crazy or I'm not racing or trying to fly like steel. It's more of like a Ladrib kind of willy kind of flying. Latency isn't the worst thing in the world for those situations. It actually can help you if it's, if you're doing it, uh, if you're getting a benefit from it. So like adding some stick smoothness, adding some filtering and stuff, there is a benefit to that. Um, and that's pretty much it. I have my everything normal. I have a little bit more dead band on y'all just because of the way that the throttle is. Uh, sometime when I'm doing throttle blips, I will inevitably give some y'all input and RC dead band too. It's very normal. So the most important things that contribute to the way I fly, I would say are feed forward of zero on roll and pitch. Um, I would say anti-gravity being there a little bit higher than usual 7.3 the RC smoothing or auto smoothness of 15 and that's it I, br I brought D min up a little bit just because my motors are usually clean uh, even if they're not I never have a problem with having D around here and I feel like the D kind of helps keep the quad mushy but in a way that is like not loose mushy it's like it's kind of tight mushy it's almost like an added eye term when you're just cruising straight going straight it kind of keeps everything nice so I like to boost demon I don't like a low demon it kind of loosens up the stick in a in a bad way I don't know how to explain it other than that I don't usually have too bad of prop wash just because of the the components that I choose and you know the basically yeah the components that I choose filtering I feel like is important for quads that are just kind of in the middle so no amount of filtering is going to help my quads that are damaged to beyond repair and those I just throw a uh, hyper smooth on and my brand new quads you know as you can see the filtering is off and does it help with my prop wash? I don't know. Yeah, I don't have prop wash right now, so I guess it does help. Um, now, obviously, I have some prop wash, but nothing like nothing like Bardwell. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. That wraps it up. Uh, OSD. Yeah, that's it. So, stay tuned. I have a couple cool reviews coming. Uh, uh, if you want to join my Patreon, if you made it to the end of the video then you're a real one and check it out it is at the bottom um i've got some charger reviews coming some trick tutorials coming so stay tuned still waiting to hit 30 patrons so i can give away a quad uh giveaways every two weeks and that's it see you guys peace <laughs>